Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's the final episode of the season, as high as Wu-Tang gets. I give a full episode recap with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around, I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. As everyone looks at video playback and the expenses are coming out of their pocket, they conclude that it's only valid to film their reality as it occurs. To add more originality, RZA directs the cameraman to film a live beatdown on the set of Protect Your Neck. Vine is concerned about the expenses, seeing how they were just now able to pay back power and pay Vine's credit card expenses only to pay for more things concerning the video. Bobby lets him know that with filming the video and when it's completed, interest will grow and so with their funding and not to worry. ODB tells Vaughn to relax with some weed as his probation is over and now he can indulge. Dirty sees everything as inevitable because they've always dreamed about this moment. Deck runs into Byron, the producer, and Byron wants to create small talk. He knows that he's signed to Wu-Tang, but he heard that he can sign solo anywhere, so what's up? While they're talking, DB sees the side conversation and grows a little concerned. Vine runs into old prison buddy Chino, and Chino is happy to see that Vine is moving on to bigger and better things. They're so cool that Vine invites him to be a part of the video. The fellas get footage of Protect Your Neck while Ray looks from the rooftop. He views his 180, from sleeping on the roof to viewing filming his rap dream video. He's taking it all in and is embracing the growth. Deck reads over a contract from the Curb Records and can't understand the verbiage. Gary adds that that's why he never signs anything, because words and contracts can be deceiving. ODB rips up the contract and lets Deck know that he has to stay focused, and Bobby is the abbot of the Whole situation. RZA is notified that the crew only has two minutes left to film and RZA thinks of a good ending short idea. Something quick, a symbolism of cutting off the heads in the music industry. The director then lets RZA take control because he has no idea how to execute such an idea in two minutes. RZA takes directorial control and no one wants to volunteer as cinematically getting their head cut off. They even bring in the dummy for the ending shot, but still need a live body to make it look realistic. Jamel volunteers to do the quick shot so they can finish the video and that they can get everything done. It's a live shot with a realistic body and then the final blow to the dummy head. The director is impressed of them not only executing the idea, but making it look authentic. It's a wrap and Bobby shows the footage to Steven, only the film still has time coding. And Bobby says that that will be removed later, but it's being kept to make it look raw and authentic. Bobby gives Steven the film receipts for reimbursement, but Steven gives him a choice to get reimbursed or use that funding for everybody to go to Jack the Rapper. Naughty by Nature, Outkast, Tupac, LL Cool J, every DJ and press in the industry, and Steve has a performance slot for Wu-Tang opening for Run DMC. Bobby is indeed impressed with that, tears up the receipts, and thinks the show is awesome and has more importance for promotion than reimbursement. Dev Jams allows the group members to take whatever popular gear they want, even though they're signed to someone else. It's promotion and a nice invite from Tracy. She even whispers to ODB, Hey, I heard that you can sign a solo deal with whoever you want. Power's father is upset that he's returned to the family business and clothing line, but he's there to do business. He wants pricing for custom t-shirts in bulk. Even though his father is pretending not to have interest in his conversation, he shares that suppliers can print logos and it will even save him money in the future. His dad is still too angry to continue the conversation and walks away. ODB takes a visit to the studio and he's screaming very loudly throughout the hallways, but Vine is on the phone. He wants to talk to some Somebody about Def Jam. Vine tells him that they'll talk about it later, just not now. Vine meets with Bobby and there's news. 
Def Jam wants to make a deal for 175 k for meth and 150 k for dirty. Also, Elektra has an offer on the table only for ODB for 150 k What Def Jam wouldn't offer dirty on the back end, Elektra will and much more. Elektra is even offering revisions for 20 years. Back end offers are only for high end acts and it's hard to say no to that offer. Bobby is not sure what to say, and Dirty has been wanting to sign for Def Jam since he was a kid, but Elektra would even give his music back? Just seems like it's just too good to just say no. Vine needs an answer because those offers won't stay on the table for long. Bobby wants to take the Elektra deal for ODB and not talk to Dirty first. Vine doesn't understand and ask him one more time, are you sure that we shouldn't talk to Dirty about this first? Bobby wants to make it clear that Vine and Bobby make all the business decisions, but also he's family, and we've got to look out for him and what has better interest. Vine agrees, and he also tells him that he'll speak with Rufkin. Jack the Rapper is next weekend, and the album release is right after. RZA is in the studio, and You God makes his bail. You God is ready to get back to work, but Bobby explains that he's in the studio and his mind is focused, but they'll eventually get to the point where they need to add in You God shots. In order to do that, they would need to get all the fellas together again to make the video fluid. If not, it's just going to be a whole bunch of solo shots, and it'll just look stupid. They also don't have any more funding for a specific camera so they'll have to use Jizz's handheld recorder. Rizza also says that he's not one to say I told you so but yeah you got tells him that he's done with hustling and he's ready to get to work. As a matter of fact he doesn't want to waste too much time concerning the video and he would rather get started in helping Bobby in the studio. You got hops into the booth and everyone loves the bars. Jamel is even encouraged by Jizza to write his own stuff. Cherie, Dennis and his brothers take a moment to catch up on everything going on and it's unfortunate that his brother Darren is having breathing problems. Later on Jamel shows Jizza what he came up with and then he shows Rizza. Rizza wants him to hop into the studio but Jamel's delivery isn't too crisp. He tells him to fill his lyrics and deliver it with confidence and emotion. The second try is executed. Rizza shows Jamel the gift of Pro Tools and how additional vocals can be added to the tracks faster. The digital evolution allows additional vocals to be added with the perfect timing. Now everything is finished. It's celebration time of the completion of the album and the booking of Jack the Rapper. Dirty compliments Rizza in being a wonderful abbot but coins himself as the oracle. He's excited about everything for Wu-Tang but in the future having his solo deal signing with Def Jam. As they leave the subway, Dirty keeps saying how he's going to make so many more ideas with Def Jam, ideas for album covers, music, and Bobby finally breaks the news that he's been signed to Elektra. The paperwork has already been completed and Meth has signed to Def Jam. Dirty is pissed that it seems that Meth seems to be taken more seriously, especially him being signed to such a big label as Def Jam. Bobby should allow him to make his own decisions and he's not a little kid. Bobby says that he made that decision and he's not thinking about the future. The deal for Electra will allow him to own his own music and those offers are hard to come by. 20 years from now, owning your own music and keeping that money rolling in your pockets. It's funding for you, your children, and even your grandchildren. Dirty is so upset, he punches Bobby in the face and they start to fight. Bobby tries to calm him down, but he's bitten by Dirty until he's released and being free. Dirty tells him that how dare you make decisions for me and my future. Darren has returned from the hospital and he's receiving fluids in his IV to keep him hydrated and calm. Dennis says that he's not going to Jack the Rapper because he wants to stay home with his family. Darren musters up enough strength to point to the door telling him not to stay and make that move. Bobby has a new place and even though it has smelly pipes, it has better acoustics. Jizza can't believe that he finally got his own place and he's still thinking about everybody else and acoustics and dealing with smelly pipes. Bobby just wants to know if he's seen dirty, but 
Dirty claims that he would get to Atlanta by himself. Jizza also encourages Bobby just to let him be alone, let him be angry in peace in his own space. They arrive to the South and it's an obvious cultural difference with the lingo and style. Meth asks you God about his parole and if he's even allowed to travel, but you guys says that he's not worried about it. A media outlet wants statements from Wu-Tang and Dirty pops up saying it's Wu-Tang forever and they'll give a good show. When they're done filming, Dirty still doesn't want to talk to Bobby. From across the room, Bobby notices that Steven is upset and being held back from security. Steven drops the bomb that he just found out that Wu-Tang has been pulled from the show. Power and Vime get involved and they find out that the show is running late so they had to cut a group's performance. Bobby asks if they can just do one song but the promoter says to pull their backstage passes and come back next year. Dennis is pissed that he left his family behind, travel all this way only to find out that they can't even perform. Vine reports that he talked to Jam Master J and that he'll make sure that Wu-Tang will get seven minutes before DMC performs. RZA says that Jay is cool and he'll say one thing, but it's all about that promoter. That's the problem. He's being a jerk for no reason. RZA says that it's a shame that people only seem to understand when they get on that rah-rah and Dennis and Vine know exactly what time it is. As the promoter gets on stage, Wu-Tang makes eye contact knowing what's next while Power and Vine convince the sound guy in their own way that it will be wise to play their song next. The promoter announces Outcast, but instead Wu-Tang bum rushes the stage and the sound guy drops the track. The crowd is loving every moment, slightly confused about if it was a skit or if it was for real. They find out that it was for real as the promoter is pushed off of the stage. As the crowd is hype, Power and Vine pass out Wu-Tang t-shirts. After the performance, fans raved about how they rushed the stage and pretended like they were bum rushing everybody and sales increased like crazy. Several radio stations love the Wu-Tang style and logo. To add the cherry on the top, radio station 106.1 KME. El even get a surprise call from Riza. Bobby's mom is happy about all of the success, but learns that the cover isn't Bobby's face exactly. It's an intern, but Bobby says that he'll explain that whole situation later. Vine arrives at their now office and they talk about how they made it and all of their hard work paid off. Vine tells them that this was your idea and it was executed well. I just played my part. Bobby says that he shouldn't say it like that because they wouldn't be where they were if he didn't do his part. Everybody is a team and everybody was a team player. They've only had the office for about a month and they received calls from every record label concerning solo deals, literally for almost every member of the group. There's a lot of progression by Bobby and five albums will be completed under Wu-Tang. The movement is surreal. You God, unfortunately, is arrested for violating his probation. There's a sequence of montage shots showing everybody in the next steps and where they are in their lives, while Bobby assigns names to floppy disk of completed albums. As a rainstorm begins, Raekwon tells his mom the good news that it's all about progression, things are going well, and it won't be too much longer of her living in her conditions. Jizza gets respect from the Israelites, Method prepares his solo album with Def Jam, Power shows his dad that the business is coming along and his first check was amazing. Not only that, Wu-Tang Apparel is selling faster than ever. His dad even suggests that the clothing wear should be called Wu Wear. Dirty continues unfortunate reckless behavior as he goes to a bar, even assaulting the bartender, making customers so fearful that they leave. Vine finds out that Nia is pregnant and Bobby gets time with his love. Darren's health is unfortunately declining. And Bobby and his girl continue pillow talk. They talk about how they stuck things out and how they're a true couple, even with the long distance. As they talk, they're interrupted by a loud smashing noise. And it's the basement. It's completely flooded, destroying all of his albums, vinyls, and recording equipment. And that is the end of the episode. <music> And now it is time for your favorite part of the video. That's right, my review. We have concluded this season on a very, very, very well written cliffhanger. Now, for those of you who are Wu-Tang fans, you are still heartbroken by seeing this on television. You know that 
the history of hip hop would have been completely different if certain albums came out, right? So let's understand the frustration of this. Now, to, to new people who don't understand and, you know, you watch it and you say, oh, well, they can just record everything all over again. I mean, it's a setback, but they can record everything all over again. It's easier said than done. And it's something that's of the essence of time. So say, for instance, you do a radio podcast show and you talk about all kinds of things. It's a great topic. It's great energy. Only to find out after you've done an hour show that the entire show has been deleted. You can re-record the show, but it's probably not going to be the same as how you did it before because you were of the moment. You were in its entity enjoying the topics at hand and you put forth your real-time reaction to certain things. Imagine doing that over a long period of time with an album. Not only that, getting the sound, the timing correct, the energy of delivering the bars. And you've also got to think about who's doing the vocal performance. You got to think about the artist and actually having it to do to do it all over again. Frustrating as heck. You know what I mean? I can only imagine the, the tears and, and all of the actors did an amazing job in this series. I've said time and time again that people have complaints about certain actors and how they portray each person but there's only so much range and only so much that you can do but it doesn't overshadow the beautiful complex writing and the cinematography that was executed during this season as i've said through season one and through season two if you take anything from this show you have to take from this show perseverance, following your dreams, executing it, planning, details, all of that stuff. And this show displays that like no other. So with Wu-Tang, you talk about branding and owning and having... It, it, the reason why Wu-Tang is such a platform when, it's, when you're talking about just music history is that they decided to take things into their own hands and review these so-called contracts when it came to a lot of artists. Now, if you know your hip hop history, Def Jam is this, of course, historic label. But over time, artists who are making big strides in the industry start to look at fine print. <laughs> and they start to look at what's fair. And not only sales, but royalties, right? We're talking about revisions. And as I described in another review, it's just like, you know, 20 years from now, you hear, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire on an Earth, you know, on an Oreo commercial. And they're like, let this group Oreo, you know, that's ownership. To even have a snippet in of your song in anything is yours and ownership. They would have to come to you and get permission. And not only that, say that you're deceased. You, your descendants or people that you trust, power rights of attorneys, et cetera, ha can have those rights of that profit. When you don't own your music, when you don't own it, that's a totally different subject. That means you have no say so on possibly things that you've written or that you've created and you have no ownership in that. Let's talk about the situation with ODB and RZA and the Electra signing. Of course, if you look forward to something your entire life and you look at Def Jam is the pinnacle of, wow, this is the next level and the frustration of meth being signed, but not yourself. I know some people watching that were just like, well, if it wasn't good, why didn't they why did they tell meth to take the deal? Well, Def Jam at the time was the label that gave an offer for a solo deal. But when it came to ODB, he had the choice of Electra and Def Jam. So let's just say that they brought uh, to ODB to his attention that here are the deals, right? One can say, well, it's his decision. And if he would have went with Def Jam, that would have been his decision. There are pros and cons to everything that happened in that situation. Would it have been right for Vine and Bobby to sit down and talk to them first? Talk to Dirty first? Of course, but Dirty has these rational uh, actions that he does and as a, an executive decision they decided let's just make the best business move not thinking about disconnecting right the business of it and the personal aspect of it I give you a, per, per, a perfect example you know there are a few people in the industry who have a relationship with their manager 
And then the relationship, let's say, for instance, like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend. OK, and then they get married and their spouse is their manager. A lot of the times it's difficult to separate husband and wife and business partners. And a lot of that can conflict because it's just like, are you making this decision as my husband or are you making this decision as my boss? And emotionally, that can conflict with business decisions. With this situation, with this series and in real life, we have family members uh, in that situation who make this business de decision for him. And yes, it could have been handled differently. And, you know, I think that who knows if ODB would have got signed, had things been different? You know, we don't know. It's just one of those situations where they honestly thought that they were making a good, you know, move. They were thinking about him. They were thinking about his future and they didn't want him to sign a crappy deal. But then, I, you know, I can see why, you know, ODB says, you know, well, at least give me the chance to make a decision for myself. It, it's a very, it was a very complex situation. And I could see how to this day, Bobby looks back at it and says, you know, what if or how and but you also have to think that all of these men were young. OK, all of all of everybody involved in the group was young. They, they've they learned some things about the industry, but it's not like they were the these 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 individuals who knew the industry inside and out. Right. They were making decisions on what they thought was best. Rizzo was making decisions on what he thought was best. Moving in the new place and has smelly pipes, but this has the better acoustics. Making those decisions, that heartbreak and setback and all of those things. I love how they showed the pain of it all. The emotional pain of Darren, Darren and his health declining. The, the emotional pains of, you know, um, Sha trying to get his mom out of the struggle and, and constantly being a single mom and trying to do what's, what's best. We see all of these struggles. We see the struggles with the video making. Oh, this is a great video, but there's coding on it. Or I can give you the profit, but should we go to Jack the Rapper? It's all of these complex decisions. Like, should we get our money back? We're struggling. Or should we go to, to, to the best at the time promotional concerts of our career that could catapult us? It's, it's, it's just very... Uh, unreal to say that oh if you would have done this this would have been the perfect way or that would have been the perfect way I honestly think that they all did the best that they could do in those moments and it's also so much pressure for Bobby being a young man himself and learning as he goes as well to get it perfect and them making that decision is okay you make all of the decisions that's a lot of pressure that's a that's a lot and I can only imagine having all of that pressure and not only making decisions for yourself, but for all the, everybody else. It's a lot. Uh, you got um, in his situation with probation, just those rational actions and thinking that there can't be any consequences. We saw that. We saw that you can be selfish and think of yourself and think that you're going to sway out of certain things. But then you see in actuality, reality is what it is, you know? Um, and also we see the snakes slithering in, right? We see how, oh, I heard you can sign with this. Oh, you got that, but I see how you can. I mean, it happens in, in I don't care what aspect of business or in life, it happens all the time. You can try to stay focused, but you have these things that are swaying you and everything that glitters isn't gold. I, I look forward to season three and to seeing what additional parts of their story with Wu-Tang um, that they talk about. The title of the episode was, if you're not a Wu-Tang fan, of course, and you don't know, it's major for foreshadowing, you know, as high as Wu-Tang gets. Because what I think they, well, I don't think they mean, but what's, in, what's implemented through that title is, is this as high as Wu-Tang gets? Is this as high as it, as it goes? And of course, from history, we know that there's concerts and it's a big influence across the world. But at the same time, meaning that that moment of being creative and having those once in a lifetime experiences, that high and feeling of success is a possibility saying that this is as high as Wu-Tang is going to get. And moving forward, it's business. It's the industry you have to deal with, etc. 
Um, I, <laughs> RZA gave an interview on The Breakfast Club talking about um, the flood situation. And as a Wu-Tang fan, you know, I was wondering, okay, when are they going to show this? And as I saw him get the new place and they were talking about the smelly pipes, I was like, uh-oh. Because it was like, oh, no, I'm going to see the heartbreak. I'm going to see it. But RZA has, has, did a recent interview and basically said how he was heartbroken and how Inspector Deck and how a lot of the artists were just ready to blossom and just ready to do so many things. And, oh, what would have happened if that flood wouldn't have happened and all of those epos all of those albums came out at the same time? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Um, and, and, and especially, I think, hip-hop would just be just completely different. Different. The world of hip hop, without a doubt, would be completely uh, different. But you had all this new talent just bubbling over. Um, but it's just, you know, through growth and listening to a lot of the members, it was just a lot of pressure and it was just a lot of things. And you do see sometimes, of course, unfortunately, current interviews um, with you, God, you can tell he has a lot of anger towards RZA. And it's kind of just like that's really unfair because, you know, it was an idea. It was something that you agreed to do. And if certain things didn't didn't work out, you know, your anger shouldn't just be focused towards one person. But, you know, agree to disagree. You know, if you've seen all the documentaries and things throughout the years about Wu-Tang, you'd understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. But let me know what you think. Thank you for rocking with me throughout this season two. I'll see you for season three, you guys. Leave your comments below what you thought. Uh, make sure to click that notification bell and like this video, you guys, so it can alert the algorithm on YouTube to let everybody know we're here. Tell everybody about this channel. Share about this channel. Share it with family and friends and let them know it's family friendly so they don't have anything to worry about. Follow me on Instagram at the same profile name and also to get the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. But make sure you check out the final season of Insecure. I'm doing those reviews as well. Check out Ready to Love, that re dating reality show. And there's just several more queen sugar there's only three episodes left it's just a lot to, uh, to binge watch so make sure that you check out the playlist and check out the pinned comment because i also put the most recent shows that have been reviewed or recapped and i've also put sprinkled a little bit you know of something there that i think that you should watch that i actually recommend in the meantime in between time take care of yourself and each other Bye.